Olivier, it's so great to see you. How are you doing? I'm fine. Fine. Yeah? Very excited. Yes. How is how has it been for you these last few months of you know confinement and coming out of it? What is what has that process been like for you? Uh, I mean, it's it's. I was saying that uh, as a designer, I'm used to have to explain and give informations. So in a bizarre way, I think in my way of working, it was kind of okay. Uh, but what was interesting, it was obviously we were like proceeding with work in a very like uh, unusual manner. Obviously, we had to adapt every day. And I think it was interesting for me because as I was working with a new team, we got to know each other maybe better, you know, because facing this sort of situation, you can feel the personality and the bounds get, get stronger, I think. So it's, I see it positively. Hmm. What was your biggest challenge, would you say, kind of creating this, this first collection for the House of Azara virtually to a certain extent? So I think that the challenge for me was to project into the season, um, knowing that things were unsure at the beginning. Nobody really knew whether there was going to be a season or not. And so I think that for me, it, 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 it it brings me to the notions of recentering mm. the ideas. And in a bizarre way, I felt more free to sort of connect with the heritage of a house. Because I was like feeling more like, I want to go to something timeless. I want to go to maybe closer to a gesture, the idea that we have through seeing images of the house, seeing the, you know, like the elements, iconic elements from the house. And like, I was feeling like we're not in a season where it's going to be about trends. It's maybe a season, at least for me, where I can go more into going to the, near the gesture of the founder and the idea of how things were done, cut, the look, the heritage. It became a thematic in my work. And so how, because of course this presentation is going to be completely digital, how are you trying to express those gestures and that emotion via a video? And, and what kind of video or, or digital presentation have you come up with? Well, since I'm really like a person who's used to show my work through shows, and even when I design, I really had the idea of girls walking in my mind and having the, the feeling of a moment uh, with an audience. And I felt it was probably interesting to take this opportunity to give carte blanche to artists. And I've, I really like the world and the work of Sylvie Crouch, who's a singer and composer. And um, she and Lucas Dant, who's a realizer, who's a very talented realizer, kind of like received this carte blanche to create a video uh, where she wears some of my designs. And, um, and, I, and I, love, I loved it. I love seeing it. I was very in anticipating to see what they would come from with in terms of vision. And I know that we respect each other creatively. So I was confident it was going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's one of the great things about being a fashion designer is that idea is that you put your ideas out in the world and then and see how different stylists, different magazines re-envision your Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that it contributes to your identity is how people sort of like brings the further steps to your work. And sometimes it's a in a beautiful manner that it sort of enrich who you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's the same for the House of Azaro when amazing artists throughout a few decades have worn the clothes and made what they are as they are, they are seen today. Mm -hmm. I think to see artists like Tina Turner or actresses like Romy Schneider wearing the designs has contributed to what the idea of the house is. And I was directly, it was like an evidence for me that it would be great to have a singer who I, I admire, who I love to see moving and dancing to sort of like relay this idea of the house. Yeah, because it, when you have a, a new singer or a celebrity wearing it, it you, like you said, it puts it in a new direction. Um, talking about new directions, you know, you have your own signature house and then you have Azaro, and I'm wondering how, how you creatively separate the two. Like, do you have, you know, one room for something and a, you know, different room for Azaro, or how do you know what's more Olivier's design and what's, uh, what's the other house? It's very clear for me because I'm, uh, as a designer, I'm very, on a personal manner for my own brand, I'm very connected, I think, to what I, my existence my life, my growing up and all of these things. 
And I think that my world is kind of clear somehow uh, in my mind. And the same for when I imagine things for a brand. I think that I really see separations and I really project in one direction or in the other. And actually it's something that I sometimes imagine for any brand, I can think like, oh, this would be great if they would do that. Oh. I would never do it for myself or for another brand, but I think these guys, they should do something like that it would be amazing. Like this is how I think. Um, and after I think it's great because I've always loved to work with other teams and for, you know, project other ideas and do things that I would not allow myself to do. Mm -hmm. What about the, the actual House of Bazaar? Because it's got a long history. Is there a particular era or time period that you really wanted to pinpoint and like say, you talked about a gesture, it, this is the, the moment in time, this is the gesture or the, the particular shape or silhouette that you focused on? Well, this is very interesting because first of all, it's like a typology of house that is connected to a heritage I have never really been able to work on. Um, because in my previous uh, uh, ventures, I was really more into the avant and just after war, you know, like I was in another moment where people were really dressing differently because they were living also differently. Yeah. And I think that uh, what's interesting is that here we touch to a, a part of fashion where we found sort of like timeless solutions on how to be happy wearing dresses and being very free in the mind and in the movement and the elegance and the glamour. So it's interesting because I think I can play with something that is timeless and relevant for today, but that is really connected to the core of what is the, the inner, like the, the past of the house and its heritage. It's, um, I think, you know, it's like these 60s, 70s, 80s years were really bringing key things for the everyday life that we still enjoy today. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the other things that you're talking about making it relevant for today is that the actual collection is a hybrid and very quote unquote relevant for today because you're doing what would be a haute couture, but you're pulling in a ready to wear components as well. So you're looking at couture in a different way. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of, of that kind of melange? So I think it's interesting because at the House of Azaro, we present ready to wear and couture at the same time. Um, with these events, we thought about connecting and revealing first, being more focused on the more couture and atelier part of the house. And I think that what's something that is interesting for me is that the couture side of the house is, is about making women look sublime with obviously very high quality and very refined and sophisticated clothes. But there is something about a tangible reality. I think it's also about making items that are not impractical that you can really evolve fluidly with. And in my, my mind, the couture limit with the ready to wear is kind of blurry there because it's more about sophistication. Mm -hmm. It's more about an attitude. And um, obviously there is an atelier uh, capacity and an approach to clothes that is really typical of the house. We have a lot of like soft tailorings, which is very particular mm -hmm. and uh, drapes, um, fluid materials and like, things that are really like the, the, you know, the kind of thing that these guys are really like uh, handling so well, you know, like uh, it's, it's, it was really enjoyable for me to really go to the core of the savoir faire. It must have been so great to finally, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you finally were able to all get in the same room together to a certain extent and start working on things after so many weeks of being digitally connected to be, what was it like for you to finally all get in the same room and start working together? We never came all of us together in the same room again. Uh, we are very, very cautious. Yeah. I think that we're not out of it and we're extremely cautious. Um, we see as, I mean, everybody in the team are so precious and especially at the atelier where people have a lot of experience and of course they're, most, they're more vulnerable. So most of them have been working at home and we ensured that they had everything they need to be able to work at home like they, they are when they are in the atelier. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything has been done like dispatched mm -hmm. at everybody's place. And uh, in the house I was, uh, my team in terms of studio design team is pretty young and we were like more connected and we could do some of the fittings and other things together. But we always like were like never more than three or four in a room. Mm -hmm. And we really took all these measures seriously. 
Yeah, I think that's important. Um, speaking of serious, and, but completely in a different angle, I'm, do you have um, your dream as a woman? I mean, have you got a, an image of her or is she a particular person or can you describe her as her character who this woman is who will be wearing your collections for this house? I think it's much about how the, how the person feels when she's wearing the clothes. And I think it's totally part of the spirit of the house. There is like an approach to the way things are cut. And then there is like, a, like, a, like we're looking to a more, I think, simplistic way to how things are cut, not too like complicated. Mm -hmm. And in the same time, I think the wearer, the women feels obviously embellished and sophisticated, but also free in the moves and kind of glamour. And it's very like about the feeling mm -hmm. of the wearer. That's interesting because one of the your signatures for your house is a very constructed, tailored, you know, precise. So you're talking about more fluidity, more sense of movement in this. Um, you know, each designer tries to bring, tries to incorporate the, the, well, not every designer tries to incorporate the heritage, but clearly you're trying to incorporate the heritage of the house. What elements of you, what new signatures, new DNA are you creating to bring to the Azara brand? I think I haven't been really been questioning whether me, Olivier, I'm bringing my touch. Yeah. I think it has been very intuitive. And actually the first day I was going on my own in the studio, in my room, <laughs> in the studio, which is like this mirror room. And I happened to just sketch very quickly a set of silhouettes that were like, in my mind, pure as a row. Mm -hmm but put out with a technical, a technical way of, made, of being made that was probably mine. And uh, I think I try as Olivier to bring the best solutions to make them even like more technically like uh, fluid and slender. And in the same time, I also bring a little bit like some of a twist on a signature item where I, uh, there is like a very typical motif that is like the three rings that Vanessa Stewart so amazingly brought back when she was there in a very beautiful way and I thought like I wanted to go straight to that motif and I also elongated the whole motif so that it englobes the whole body. I don't have an, even have made a research to check if it has been done. Mm -hmm. I don't think so but it was probably my way to twist it and to make it different. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, talk, you were talking about you, you went into the mirror you know ball room as it were and you were sketching is that always your starting point is it the sketching is it the fabrics is it an, an inspiration of it or is it different every time it's different every time but in this this moment i felt like well the spirits are strong in this room because i just happened to even sketch in a bizarre way like it was not my usual way <laughs> so really? i don't know <laughs> How I think it different? i'm How very different? positive with that because it's just that when you are inspired it's also because you're in another environment and you suddenly can let something go out of you that is not what your typical self. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to nurture that. And maybe it, my way to nurture it is just to let it go like without questioning too much. Mm -hmm. And obviously with the confinement, we had much time to think and I draw and sketch way further than these initial sketches. But when it came to what I would reveal first and what should we really focus on first, I felt like maybe this, this precious moment of the first beginnings mm -hmm. where I really sketched something totally connected to the heritage is maybe what I should start with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Get, tap into that big magic inspiration for sure. <laughs> yes. um, well, talking about inspiration, uh, I mean, we, I wanted to know for you, it's kind of a no-brainer question because Azaro is so linked to France and Paris, but you know, why choose to, to show this collection? Because again, it could be shown anywhere uh, in Paris. Was there any particular reason or, or need or desire or did it just feel like an organic choice that you wanted to show during the tour you wanted to show in Paris? Well, I think that the brand has a very international resonance, um, especially also because the name of the founder is an Italian name and it's, it's a very like known brand around the world. And it has been like worn by muses that were Americans or like European actresses and a lot of different in personalities sort of like propelled the brand where it, where it is now in the pantheon of famous brands. Um, so for me, I think the French touch of the brand is obviously like these 
capacity of ateliers and this culture in the making. And actually the studio where I work is a room where we have all the archives that were the media archives and the collection designs archives. So everything is in my room. And I start looking a little bit to it, but it's so huge. It's five decades of press clippings and things. So it's like a lot of work to go through everything. And I was amazed by the resonance of a brand and also all, all what it brought to fashion. And there is a French touch, obviously, in, in the fact that the way everything is like cut and everything, there is a little atelier feel, but mm -hmm. it's still an international resonance. Well, tell me this then, when did Azaro first resonate to you? When did it first come on your radar? What was your first connection to the house? Well, I think that uh, I probably knew Azaro from the time I was maybe seeing advertising passing by from the perfumes. And it's really like, I, I remember very well when Vanessa Seward was designing for the house. And I think we were many to really like her work. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was very happy because a year before starting, or like even a bit less than a year before starting there, I, I met her and I really enjoyed a moment together. Um, so, I don't know, like I think it's, that, it's just these names of house that are kind of like known. Mm -hmm. And when you stop and you start really reflect on who they are, what do they, do they mean for you, you just open like a box of like, yes, of connections to you know, sensations, mm -hmm. obviously after when you start working for them and really get focused and see elements, books and all these things, it, it gets more clear. Mm -hmm. what, what for you when you were digging through the archives and, and discovering, because you know, you, you knew Azaro kind of big picture as a brand and had, you know, that kind of references, but when you started digging in and, and you know, deciding, you know, what direction you wanted to go in, were there any surprises? What was your biggest surprise or biggest discovery? Or you're like, oh, oh my God, this. I think for a French brand back in the days, it was very anti-conformism, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, there was a real connection with pleasures of life and going out and party and all that. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of like that today, if you want to be really connected with the inherence of the house, you can do something very sophisticated, very like atelier focused, but because it's so free, you can totally be aligned with what means really the, the house. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's from what I saw, I think it's like a moment in, in time. It's like a capsule in time when I look at the past where there was a real like, uh, it was an event to go out. It was an event to have like, beautiful people like go to parties, especially in Paris. Yeah. Um, it is less the fact, less today, but it's like, it's like funny to see. It's like interesting well, I, to see. I hope that they'll be, we'll be able to go out and, and party and have great fun. <laughs> I, I hope, I hope. Um, speaking yeah. of that, let's talk a little bit about challenges. I mean, there's the challenge of having two brands to, to take care of. There's the challenge of rebranding to a certain extent, Azara with, with you included. But what do you feel, you know, this next year or this next, you know, six months to a year, what do you feel are the big challenges that are facing you? I don't think that the challenge to work in two different brands is going to be where it lies. Um, also, we have very diff different calendars and plannings. Obviously, with the events, our planning got rescheduled many, many times. I think that I don't. I, I think the challenge lies at, elsewhere. It lies in how the world is going to evolve and the difficulties we're going to face economically. And obviously, this is like the less funny part. Mm -hmm. um, but this is what it is and i think that uh, more than once people had to experience this and and just conduct their business in a way or another through these kind of times mm -hmm. it doesn't change the importance of being creative the importance to really rethink and come with something whether it's about beauty whether whether it's about the reaction to what the what is happening but i think that it's strong to remain really authentic in your creativity mm -hmm. very impulsive um, to be open eventually for some mistakes, but it's important to remain, you know, like voluntarily creative and bringing like an offering. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously on the business side, it's going to be a, it's a very questionable year that's about to happen. Mm -hmm. We're recording this before the presentation, the global first, you know, presentation of your, your video your, um, for your debut at Azaro. But we're going to post this after it's been seen. So tell me what you're hoping that everybody will have experienced when they're watching um, your video. Well, first of all, I, I think that 
it would be great if there are people who do not know Sylvie Crush, who are gonna sort of like discover her and appreciate her. Same for the realizer, Lucas Dant, who did a, a beautiful movie two years ago, whose name is Girl. Mm -hmm. uh, and he got some prizes at Cannes and it's a very talented young realizer. Obviously it's a Belgian crowd and I was happy to dive with Belgians. Mm -hmm. But I hope that people are gonna be inspired by the video and, and you know, I don't want to, to say we're giving it all. I just uh, think that it's a special moment and we're gonna like reveal step-by-step -step things throughout the season. And I hope that by January, we're gonna be all able to come together and do a proper fashion week. Mm -hmm. I hope it's the last digital fashion week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I mean, it would be great to have some sort of a hybrid, but I agree with you. There's yeah. nothing like seeing one of your collections in person, Olivier. It's, it's quite an experience. Thank you <laughs> so, so much for taking the time. I look forward to seeing the presentation and, uh, you know, hopefully seeing you very soon. My pleasure, Jessica. Anytime. Anytime. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.